We're talking today about bias in algorithms. Daphne LaFrance Vargay here with me. You had a really interesting uh, conversation, I understand, Daphne, uh, with a researcher about this. And she talked about a, a lot about how hackers uh, can help out in this situation. So what is the, uh, what is the relationship there? So yes, as you said, I was talking to this researcher about the group, the work she's doing with uh, her group, her advocacy group, the Algorithmic Justice League, in finding what parallels we can draw between um, white hat hacking, ethical hacking, bug bounty programs that underpin the work of white hat hackers, and the detection of uh, bias in algorithms. So bug bounties are obviously uh, programs that have existed for a few decades now. They're usually sponsored by companies who pay uh, ethical hackers to detect vulnerabilities or potential flaws in software code um, for those companies before actual malicious hackers can get their hands on it and exploit them, um, which could, could ultimately lead to a loss of financial uh, gains for the company or a reputational damage for the company. Um, so those are what white hackers do, white hat hackers do. They've existed for a long time and it's quite easy to see what the parallel here can be with uh, doing the same thing, but to detect bias in algorithms. Um, until now, there's obviously been many different researchers, uh, journalists, lawyers, advocacy groups, uh, that have been doing a lot of work in this field of algorithmic bias and algorithmic harms. Uh, they've been doing this work sort of in silos, separately, independently, with their own means. Um, they've had different ways of uh, publicizing or, or bringing to the public the, the outcome of their research, but they, they don't really have a community where they can all come together exactly in the same way that um, white hat hackers can sort of plug into the bug bounty community and start carrying out their work. Um, so that's really what uh, this researcher Deborah Raji is working on at the moment with the Algorithmic Justice League, finding how those models of um, bug bounty programs have developed and whether it would be possible to adapt that to the algorithmic space um, in terms of algorithmic harms and having this community of uh, bias hunters really uh, that would be carrying out the same work for, for an entirely different type of nuisance which is algorithmic bias. It's really fascinating uh, work Daphne and, and talk a little bit about uh, you know some of the hurdles they're facing or I mean, maybe the things that can't transfer uh, to AI ba uh, bias. So yeah, of course, it's hard to uh, develop a methodology and to standardize by uh, bias detection and harm detection in algorithms uh, compared to standardizing perhaps um, vulnerability detection information security. Uh, there's not really a spectrum of options when you detect a bug, it's either a bug or it's not. Whereas when it comes to harm, uh, you have to define what is harm. The definition of harm will, will differ whether from, from individual to individual or even from an individual's perspective or from a company's perspective. Uh, even once you've got, you've got those harms defined, should you have a hierarchy of harms or are some harms more harmful than others? Um, so there's a lot of questions here uh, that still need to be answered. Um, even if we came up with those definitions, what happens next? If a harm is detected, should a company be punished for it? How should, should this company be punished for it? Um, so there's a lot of um, standards that still need to be standardized and a methodology that needs to be drawn and a structure that needs to be put in place, really. Um, fundamentally, there remains a, a key sticking point when we compare bias detection to bug detection, and that's the, the misalignment of interests perhaps between companies that produce AI mo models and the researchers that are trying to detect these biases. In the information security field, it's obviously in the company's best interest to detect vulnerabilities before uh, their product or their service perhaps uh, is made available to the public. Um, to sort of step in there before malicious hackers might exploit this vulnerability uh, and cause reputational damage or, or financial loss, as I said. The dynamic is still very different in the algorithmic space in the sense that it's not yet really in companies' best interest financially, reputationally, to pay researchers to find those biases. Uh, so that's where the dynamic re really needs to change for, for this community, perhaps to gather pace and be successful. Um, it's hard to tell how it's going to happen. Uh, but, but certainly that's what these researchers and this advocacy group that I mentioned, the Algorithmic Justice League, is working towards at the moment. And expand on that a little bit, if you would, Daphne, as far as that, that league is concerned, you know, who she's partnering with here and the others that she uh, is, is collaborating with and where do they stand right now going forward? 
At the moment, it's mostly about gathering this community of people who come from such a diverse backgrounds. I mentioned uh, researchers, journalists, lawyers, individuals even, you know, we've had examples of people taking to social media to uh, explain uh, or, or talk about their experience being the victim of an algorithmic bias or an algorithmic harm. So at the moment, really, it's about gathering this community of people who have this common interest in detecting harm, uh, but come from perhaps uh, many different backgrounds. It's about standardizing this methodology. So having a, a perhaps a, a bias disclosure protocol, just like uh, bug bounties have a vulnerability disclosure protocol. Uh, so it's really, it's about elaborating this methodology uh, going forward. Um, the way they see things, I think is very much that we're going to have to have this switch in the dynamic in the sense that it's going to, take more than just companies um, implementing self-discipline uh, when it comes to AI bias. For companies to really act on this is going to require perhaps external pressure, whether that comes from regulation or whether that comes from the public. Um, I mentioned fear of reputational damage that could definitely be applied to the AI space. Um, but it's hard to see things moving along without uh, the, the intervention of that additional external pressure. Yeah, most certainly. I know much more to come on this, uh, Daphne. And we do have uh, information on bias and algorithms you can check out uh, in Daphne's full article on ZDNet. We hope you will there. We appreciate you watching.